Assalamu alaikum and hi guys. So we are going to continue with our lecture. So previous lecture we already covered the generals uh, on substitution products. So for this lecture we are going to discuss on the differences between SN2 and SN1 rations. There are several factors that you have to consider in order you want in order for you to decide whether the reactions will undergo the substitutions nucleophilic bimolecular or SN2 reactions or that reaction will will undergo the substitutions nucleophilic uh, unimolecular reactions. Basically, the first item or the first factor that you have to consider it is a substrate which is your, your alkyl halide. So alkyl halide, it could be um, methyl halide K, which is CH3, X. So X can be any halide group, including fluoride, um, bromine, chlorine, or even iodide. Right. So, um, next one, this is methyl halide. Next one, you have primary RX. For example, CH3, CH2, Cl. And then you can have your secondary Rx such as CH3, CH, CH3, and then Cl here. Or even your tertiary Rx. CH3, C, CH3, and then you have Cl and this one is also CH3. So, for your revision on how you want to classify whether your alkyl highlight is methyl highlight, primary, secondary, or tertiary. So, just look at, at the carbon. So, this carbon is a single carbon without uh, attached to any carbon, other carbons. So, that's why this is considered as methyl highlight. Okay, so for the prim primary alkyl halide, the Cl is attached to primary carbon. Why it is a primary carbon? Because this carbon is attached to another one carbon. So, this carbon is considered as primary carbon. The next one is a secondary carbon. Alright, so look at, at this carbon because it is attached to your Cl. So, this carbon is attached to one carbon and they also attached to the other one carbon so total carbon attached is two that's why it become a secondary rx okay and then the last one is a tertiary same uh, like before so this carbon is attached to one two three carbon so that's why this carbon is known as tertiary carbon so the Cl is attached to the tertiary carbon. So that's why it becomes a tertiary alkyl halide. Right. So for that one is how you want to classify the metal primary, secondary, or tertiary alkyl halide. Okay, for the next one. Okay, I want you to focus on this one. Okay, so for SN2 reactions, it is preferred by methyl halide primary and the secondary Rx and for the SN1 reactions, it is only uh, undergo by the secondary and tertiary alkyl highlight. So meaning that whenever you encounter or you you found the methyl highlight, so definitely it is a SN2 reactions. Okay. So for the primary bersama, okay. So if you jump if you found that you punya alkyl halide is a methyl or primary Rx, so it is a definitely SN2 reaction, okay, not uh, SN1 reaction. So as you can see here, so for methyl primary, it is for SN2 reactions. Uh, for the secondary, it can be SN1 or SN2. And for the tertiary, it definitely only for SN1 reactions. So... The question is why uh, SN2 prefer the met prefer the meta sorry methyl halide primary okay and then why um 
as a more reactions prefer tertiary alkyl halide okay so the answer is because of the steric hindrance okay. steric hindrance is actually um the analogy that i used before um is it the the motorcycle and the lorry right so you can refer back to the previous uh, video so basically um for the steric hindrance okay bila mana you punya uh, structure jadi lebih compact okay more complex and complex so your nucleophile uh, will reduce its strength because it a bit uh, it is a bit harder for the nucleophile to attack the carbon okay so as you, as you can see from this uh, diagram so from the meta halide to the tertiary alkyl halide the nucleophile uh, the space that nucleophile can attack your carbon become more compact okay so steric hindrance produced by the bulky R group okay so kalau you tengok dekat sini okay for the methyl halide you only have one carbon okay so dia tak compact the less compact so bila less compact for example for this one okay you have your methyl halide bila you nucleophile nak attack mudah okay tapi bila you ada macam ni okay this is your carbon and then this is your cl all right so you either ch just like this so bila your nucleophile na attack okay the center carbon that is attached to your cl it is a bit difficult why because the space here the crowded okay crowded dengan apa crowded dengan r group kalau yang macam ni the first one ni dia tak crowded dia senang je kenapa sebab dia tak ada r group this is not r group okay so meaning that makin uh, makin stable the carbon okay makin stable carbon ni carbon yang stable adalah carbon yang uh, have a lot of substituents okay attached to more carbon so that carbon is considered as uh, more stable carbon so meaning can increase um, the stability of this carbon so makin susah you punya nucleophile nak attack. So, bila dia susah nak attack, so meaning that the reactions akan jadi slower. So, SN2 reactions, okay, is a fast reaction. SN2 fast. Okay, SN1 slow. That's why the SN2 reactions does not uh, occur in the tertiary rx tak boleh berlaku pada sn2 kenapa due to the steric hindrance effects okay so as you can read here the rate of sn1 reactions increase as the number of r group on the carbon with the leaving group increase okay so kalau sn1 dia akan prefer kepada uh, tertiary carbon and then baru secondary okay kenapa so this one kita akan discuss bila kita uh, involved by the mechanism you will see the difference between the SN2 mechanism with the SN1 mechanism why SN2 um, does not require uh, a stable carbon and why SN1 required a better or a more stable carbon. Okay. So, 
and next is on the nuclear file so this one are uh, very simple sn2 will need a strong nuclear file while for sn1 will require a weak nuclear file this is a mechanism on sn1 and sn2 all right for sn1 mechanism the electrophile okay, which is a strong electrophile will attack uh, your carbon that that is attached to living group directly okay so there is no um there is no carbocation here carbocation no okay that's why it's known as one step mechanism okay one step this one there is a formations of carbo can iron first from uh, your archaeolite structure and then the living group will leave your um, main structure and then you will have your carbo can iron this is the reason why sn1 needs a strong or a stable carbon because sn1 it will form a carbo cation so this carbo cation okay makin dia stable makin bagus so that's why previously tadi saya dah bagi tahu the sn1 reactions require a tertiary alkyl halide ataupun reaction with sn1 uh, with tertiary alkyl halide adalah better than the secondary alkyl halide better than the primary even untuk primary tak akan berlaku sebab primary dia sangat tidak stable so for the formations of carbocation you perlukan carbon yang stable so that's why sn1 dia tidak akan berlaku kepada primary or even metal because instability but for sn2 there is no formations of carbocation so because of no formations of carbocation ion okay so that's why sn2 does not require a stable carbon so that's why the sn2 reactions can occur on the primary or even better for the metal halide okay so example say 3 cl so for nucleophile sn2 will need a strong nucleophile while sn1 will need a weak nucleophile so the mechanism i will discuss later all right so and then for the living group it doesn't matter whether it is sn1 or sn2 reactions both reaction will need a good living group so for the uh sequences okay highlight group you have f and then cl and then br and then i so menuruni kumpulan is a better living group okay better living group i will use lg so meaning that the living group uh sorry meaning that you cannot use the living group to differentiate whether the reaction will undergo sn1 or sn2 because uh, both reactions will need a better living group all right so for the next video i will continue with the mechanism